Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday Live. My name is Ashley Hay. I'm an artist and the importer of Powtex for Australia. And today I'm going to be talking to you about having a little bit of festive fun for your Christmas table with making some beautiful wine glasses. So you would have all seen the piece on the cover sheet and so this is it so if we take a look at that um, you can see a little bit more detail there of how it actually looks so what I'm going to show you today is how to do some fabric elements and using Powtex the wonderful thing is that you actually can um, it it's going to adhere to glass so you can use your fabric with the Powtex and the Powtex acts like an adhesive as well as hardening the fabrics and fibres. So these elements here, they're just paper flowers, but they're actually quite hard from having been hardened with the Powtex. And this is just string. So I don't know, you can see how stiff that is. Um, and um, so I'm going to have some fun this morning and showing you this. And it is a lot of fun to actually do um, when you are working with the Powtex, you will have so much fun with this. So of course, what we need is we need a wine glass. And I have got some of these stones. It would be really, really nice to have a stone, um, a lovely red stone. And so I'm thinking I might have to go in search of some red stones because I really would like to do a red and a gold one. So, um, all right, hang on. I might just... Um, there we go. So I can see everyone's comments now. So hello, everyone. Hello, Donna. Hello, um, Donna as well. Two Donnas, Donna from Canada and Donna from Melbourne. So welcome and thanks for joining me. All right, so let's get started. So of course, the first thing is that we're going to add all of our textural elements. So you can see this one has a stone on there too. Uh, so it's peeking through from underneath and um, there is actually, uh, it's, there's some lace on there and some t-shirt material. So let's have a look first at what you need to actually get started with this. So of course, a wine glass. You might like to add an element with a stone. Now, all I have done is used a little bit of stone art to actually stick that on there. But even a hot glue gun will be enough to actually hold the stone in place while you're working with the fabric. So, um, let's, let's get cracking with that. I'm throwing myself off. Okay, so what have I got? I've got some mop string. I love working with mop string. It's essentially a mop which has been cut up. It is beautiful texture and fibres. I've got a few paper flowers here and I've got a little bit of lace and then I've got some t-shirt material and that's just cut into strips so that I can use it easily for the wine glass. And I've got some long lacy stuff. So it's like a big long shoelace. It's called Ribbon X. It's a little bit hard to get hold of in Australia now. I used to be able to get it. I have got some left in red. And then I've got some cooking string. Now, this is really nice because it is as absorbent as the mop string. So it's just a finer texture, gives you a little bit um, more detail. So there's a few bits and pieces that we can have a play with there. And if we take a look at this, the the T-shirt material is actually a really lovely base because you can create um, rouging with it. So you can just crumple the T-shirt material up and basically drop it onto your piece. You can allow it to be ribbed and give it texture as you create. And then this here is your mop string, just put around the edges there and of course more down here and the paper flowers. 
This bit of um, decorative element up here is actually just mop string as well, but it's been split apart. So I'll show you that in just a minute. So if we have a look at this one, I am actually really liking this one. You can't see it very well. It's quite dark, but um, once I embellish it, you'll see that there's some beautiful ribbing here and then it's quite um, straight. Now, I prefer this shape wine glass. I find these ones a little bit stumpy. So it just, it's a personal taste, I guess. So I really like this, this, this one um, because of the shape. And so it started off with this longer shape. So you can do any glass and the Powtex, of course, is going to adhere to the glass. So we need our black Powtex. And we're going to use that with our materials and we're going to go straight onto the glass. So with the Powtex, like I said already, the great thing is it's going to act like an adhesive. So I've got a bowl here. Give my Powtex a good stir and shake before I use it. Of course, I've already stirred it. So hey, Robin, lovely to see you. And we'll put some black out. Now I do have some latex gloves here as well and I'm going to start with the t-shirt material to give me a bit of a base and I might do this one that actually has the stone on it. I like to separate my t-shirt material so when my hands are dirty I can pick it up easily and um, just grip that without having to uh, worry too much. So there we go, all set to go. And we'll put the gloves on and we'll get cracking. Hey Natalie, lovely to see you back in Studios and Workshops Queensland. So welcome, thanks for joining. I loved your amazing sun goddess that looked incredible. So if you haven't seen that um, and you're in the Powertex Australia Creative Hub, make sure you check it out. It looks amazing. So I'm just coating the T-shirt material. Now you can see it's very wet and slimy. So it's got too much Powertex on it. So the best way is to take another piece of t-shirt material and actually work the excess Powertex in from the first piece. I like to do a few pieces at a time. Normally I've got a bigger bowl and I hang it over the sides. But today I've got this little bowl, so I'm just going to make a mess on my table. And I like to massage it in. So this is what I like to do. I prefer to use enough Powertex but not so much that it gets super wet. So there's a lot there in that section so I can just rub those bits that still need some Powertex on them into that very wet section there and then I like to check through and make sure the whole piece is covered which it is. Do another piece while my hands are dirty. Woohoo, looks like I'm going to have to do another piece. So there we go, we'll have four on the go. Donna's just saying that that sun goddess was amazing. It is absolutely gorgeous, yes. And if you're not in the Creative Hub, it's a really great group to connect with and you'll see some amazing artwork come through through the hub. And it's also good if you've got any questions to actually join the group and then if you're stuck with anything, there's always someone there that will be willing to give you some feedback or help you with anything that you're stuck with. So if you are beginning with Powertex, it's a really great group to be part of. We're all very friendly and helpful 
and um, we love sharing with people. Now, at this stage, I like to use my fingers instead of um, keeping my gloves on. I just find that I've got more control. So after I've dipped, I actually wash my gloves so that I can reuse them. And I'm just using a damp cloth for the purpose of the demonstration. I think I've just made more of a mess of the table than <laughs> cleaning it up. But anyway, there you go. All right, so now I've got my fingers nice and clean and I can actually just start playing with the Powtex and these bits of fabric that I've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stretch it so that I get really almost long stringy bits and I'm just going to take that and pop it onto my artwork. Now, I do find it very useful to use kebab sticks. So kebab sticks are an excellent tool, so make sure you've got those on hand. And I've just really created an edge rim. I'll grab another piece here, make it into a long stringy bit. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to do a little bit of a rougey effect in here. And then I can get my kebab stick and just adjust where that's sitting. But as much as possible, I quite like to allow the fabric to be fabric and just drape and drop. And what I'm interested in is creating some beautiful textures as I go. So that's really the main emphasis is to do that. The other tip is make sure you keep your hands clean. Otherwise, you'll find that you start to stick to your power techs and um, you actually pull your bits off. Another long stringy piece. I'm just going to finish rouging in here. And then I'm going to go up the stem of the glass. Now, when I get to here, I can actually unravel my fabric a little bit. So it's finer. So it's still got a bit of texture. I can actually do it as well. So it's got a little bit of a decorative bit there. This is the front here, of course, so I might actually try and make that so it's coming to the front section. And then I just keep going. So now I'm going to not pull it so stringy. I might just do it a little bit so we can finish off the stem. Fun and games, fun and games. So there are so many ways that you can do this. So t-shirt material is really quick and easy and it's very, very instant. I'm actually going to come up here with that. And I can always adjust that a little bit later. Just gonna clean my fingers again. Then I'll lift it up and show you. Got someone from Montreal, welcome. So that's a bit exciting, lovely to have you. So you can see what I've done there. So this is just a little bit closer up. Um, so you've got 
the rouging on the bottom of the glass and I can actually fix that maybe do a little bit more with that maybe put some mop string in there but I can spread those bits out and fiddle and twiddle with that until I'm happy with how that's really looking and then I've just come up the stem of the wine glass and when I've got to the base of the glass I've just started to just do a nice flat piece. Now if you are going to use the glasses for drinking it's nice to actually leave a lip of glass for actually sipping your wine so you might not want to go to the top whereas these ones all tend to be just more decorative so I could put a little succulent in it which might be quite nice for Christmas and or I could put um, you know a nice tea light candle or something in there that um, will burn it would make a lovely little candle holder all right so of course now I need to do some more fabric and you can clean your glass off totally at the end so you don't have to stress too much about getting um, power techs on your glass uh, so Natalie's just saying, um, could be beautiful glasses for the Christmas table. Absolutely, Nat. That's um, exactly the plan is to show, um, you know, some festive fun for your Christmas table decorations. And how, what a beautiful gift it would make to actually give a set of wine glasses to someone special this Christmas. So you imagine if you made a beautiful set of six wine glasses all made exactly the same way so that they all match, or you might do a different one. You might do one in a different color. So, uh, all right, so we need some more T-shirt material. And so I'll do a bit more of that and get the base done. And then we'll get onto some decorative elements. So it's just a case of dipping again. Yeah, nice idea, Natalie. So I'll pair it with a lovely wine bottle, a nice bottle of wine as a gift. So yeah, two wine glasses with a lovely bottle of wine. How nice would that be? Of course, you could also do a, a beautiful bottle cuff, bottle bling for your wine bottle. So if you haven't seen, there is a YouTube video that I've done um, called Bottle Bling, which will show you how to do that. So what's everyone got planned for this Christmas? You're spending it with family, family and friends somewhere. Where are you going to be? Are you having it at home or are you having Christmas elsewhere? What's everyone doing this year? And are you making handmade gifts? Have you made anything for Christmas gifts? Maybe you've made some beautiful Christmas personalised Christmas tags. What's everyone been up to this creative Christmas? Because it's always so much more fun to do a handmade Christmas, isn't it? So much more meaningful to give someone something that you've actually made. So I thought next week I might share a couple of things I'm going to give away, but um, I also thought I might do um, maybe an altered Christmas bottle next week. So you could drop me a line and let me know let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next week. So I'm thinking an altered Christmas bottle. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. Um, if you'd like maybe some gift ideas, I think it's getting <laughs> maybe a little bit late in the piece to do all your makes. I think everyone's probably just about made. Amanda's saying all oh, the wine glasses sound good too. Um, a beach Christmas, Natalie, that sounds gorgeous. And a Cairns Tablelands New Year, how wonderful. Homemade chocolates, mmm. 
Nice. Very nice. And I know, Donna Salt, I know you've been busy making some Christmas baubles. So I've seen lots of beautiful colour baubles there that you've been making. So they look lovely as well. And um, you've been very busy because you've made a lot of them. Okay, so we're going to just pop this T-shirt material on in the same way as we've started. And you can even flip your glass over so that you can see what you're doing a little bit better. I like to have my scissors on hand as well and I'm going to actually cut this in half because I just want to create a little bit more of a base before I start on the top bit. So I'm just forming around that bottom bit so that it's got some nice texture and it's joined joined in there okay then we'll flip it over and see how that's looking <laughs> so usually i have a wash up bowl for my hands and i just keep dunking my hands so that my fingers stay nice and clean because i do like clean fingers when i'm doing this because otherwise i do find that i start to stick all right so i'm quite happy with that and i'm now going to work the fabric down the other way and what's happening of course now is we're actually going to use the powtex on the fabric to actually set the stone in place so it's the glue gun isn't a it's an instant stick, but it's not a permanent solution because it will just come loose. Whereas if you use your T-shirt material to really embed that stone, it picked up a nice clean bit there. And that's going to stick that stone really oh, I'm making a mess of my glass but that's okay like I say I can clean it up later and then that taily bit there I'm going to use as a little decorative element so um, I might just actually pull it down over that bit all right So keep your glass clean as well as you go and then you won't have so much to clean up at the end. So just giving it a little wipe as you go is really helpful, especially in those areas where you know you don't really want power techs. And then use your kebab stick to get in and just adjust anything that you want to adjust. I can also get my brush and get a little bit of Powtex if there's any bits where I just want it to stick down a little bit more. But I'm quite liking that. Don't know about the little taily bit, but I can, I think it just needs a little friend there, but I can sort that out later. And, um, just make sure I'm happy with it later. So twiddle to your heart's content, but let's get this other piece on that I've got here. And again, I might actually cut that. And just a tip for you, if I do use my scissors like this, I'm using an old pair of scissors and I also um, would use some steel wool steel wool just to clean them up at the end so warm soapy water steel wool and then dry my scissors so that means that I can use them again yep. 
And this is where you can just play. So all of this comes down to your personal choice in terms of what you can do. But the T-shirt material, as you can see, is really gorgeous to work with because it uh, gets a really beautiful stretch and it's really quite leathery when you stretch it out. And so what you want is you want to create some contrast um, in terms of your textures. So it's not the same all over, so that there's some detailed areas with maybe some rouging, and then you've got some flatter areas so that there's not as much happening there. And then, of course, you can take another layer of interest over the top of, of the base. All right. So I'll just give this glass another little wipe there. And I'm quite happy with how that's looking, but I just feel like it obviously needs some attention in this back area here where there's not a lot happening. So I'm just going to do just a flat piece probably just as a base. And I can actually go back into that and I can pull that piece over the top of that one. And again, I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to put that piece that I've just put down nice and flat. And then I'm going to pull that one back over the top of that. And so what you want to do is you want to pay attention to your edges. So it's actually paying attention to your edges. Oops, pulled that a bit far. It's paying attention to your edges that is going to give your piece a really beautiful finish. So really make sure that you haven't got any taggy bits where things join they look textural and interesting, not just kind of cut and um, scabby looking, <laughs> for want of a better word. Um, so you just want to really, as you go, check it around. So it is a sculptural piece. So with any sculptural piece, you want to look at it from different directions and just make sure that from every direction that you're looking at it, that you're happy with how um, it is looking. So that's looking quite nice. As I say, um, I think my little tag here might need a friend so it looks more like a bow or I could actually totally get rid of that just by pulling it into my design like so. doesn't want to go. Hang on, I'm going to get my other hand in so I can use my right hand because I am right-handed. <laughs> okay and get my brush and just tidy, whoop, tidy those ends up. And that's the same, any bits that maybe just need a little touch more Powertex, you can just get in there. But you don't want to use, overuse your Powertex so that you lose all your texture. See this bit here? It's not quite joined in, but where I want it to join is really here around that stone. So I've got quite a nice uh, design there. Got this taggy bit hanging off here, so we'll just get rid of that. Yeah, so where I want it to be nice is really around this stone area here. So whilst it's not very nice here, 
I can actually put some mop string or something on there anyway. So what would be ideal would just be have just a touch more t-shirt material there to be able to pull it across and probably if I fiddled with it, probably if I fiddled with it, I could, I think I went off camera there so you might not have seen that, but you can see this little section here, um, it's quite, um, it's this just an annoying little gap and um, if I did fiddle with it and take my time I could probably just work that under there with the kebab stick. Um, but it would be a little bit of a fiddle that I'm not going to do while I'm showing you how to do this and it's not that important. All right, so now we've got the base texture. What we want to do is we want to put some other elements of interest on. So I'm going to have a nice clean up here afterwards. So um, Natalie is going all yum, so that must have been to the chocolate, I think. Um. <laughs> she's just saying, she's just saying, Natalie's just saying, oh, how organised to clean your scissors at the end of a project and not three years later. <laughs> You could use a face, in absolutely, yes. So Robin's just saying, oh, you could use a face, like a plaster face, instead of um, a stone. And yes, next week on the um, altered bottle, I was thinking I would show you um, a different element as a focal point. So um, yes, absolutely, you could use a face, no problem, which would look amazing. All right, so... Then we've got our mop string and with the mop string it's just about creating some decorative areas. So you might want to do a little bit of a dangly piece like what I did on the, on the other glass. But I kind of like this really classic look of this one. So it's a little bit hard for you to see but it really is really, really um, lovely. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if we try the front camera, I'll see if you can see that. Um, if I hold it up like that, I think that's a little bit better. So it's um, just got a classic elegance about it. And um, I really like that one. So this one is feeling a little bit the same way. It's kind of matching. And what I've done on the back of this one is I've just literally put... Um, a bit of crumpled fabric like a ruffle that um, looks really nice as a decorative element on the back. So if you do want to use the string, the really nice thing is that you can actually do all sorts of things with string, of course. So you can create patterns on your piece uh, with some swirly bits if you would like to do that and you can make it a little bit decorative in that way or you can actually you know take it around and follow uh, the the lip of that texture if you want or like I say you could actually um, do some drapey elements. I quite like with the mop string to um, tie a knot in it and then actually shred those ends so it looks a little bit like a tassel might get noisy here in a minute we've just had a <laughs> there's a bit of work going on outside the studio here today and um, I think a concrete truck just a concrete truck has just arrived but we'll see how we go so it's got a tassel there and so then all I do is add some power text to that and I can pop that on there. So let's do that quickly. We might as well, even with the truck. So you might get a bit of background banging, but I'm sure you'll still be able to hear me. Can't have one tassel. We've got to have two tassels, right? Should have had a ice cream container lid here. What else have I got? Nothing. 
just do it on here. So usually I would do um, this on a like a glad wrapped mat um, or like I say I could have just done it on an ice cream container lid. Totally making a mess of my tabletop, never mind. Get that in the big city. So who's inspired to make wine glasses? I hope this is um, inspiring you to do it. it. Even any time of the year, it's such a beautiful project to do because what a beautiful gift to give to someone, um, you know, a glass or a couple of glasses like Natalie suggested, even better with the bottle of wine. <laughs> so what a beautiful gift, isn't it? So if you love the live, um, it would be really fantastic if you shared it with your community um, and just spread the word about them and um, so that lots of people get the benefit of being able to come along and see what we do. Ah, there goes the concrete truck. And so I can just pop that onto my piece. I'll Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. Just let me know that if the sound's okay. So um, there's a few comments. I can't quite see them. Uh, obviously these are hand wash only. Yes, absolutely, Donna, hand wash. Yep, don't put them in the dishwasher. All right, so there we've got the tassels and again I can fiddle around with where they actually fall and how they look and where I layer them and where I want those. So I might actually just pop that one up a little bit higher so it's not at exactly the same level. All right. Now, a really lovely um, finish is to actually use some paper flowers as well. So paper with Powtex is absolutely gold. I can't see, um, I'm not very good at reading these questions. Um, so Robin's just saying, and use blue Powtex. Absolutely. So you can absolutely, of course, use different colours in the Powtex to create the base. So you could use red Powtex, you could use blue Powtex, whatever you want. What I am using here is actually the black Powtex. What I find with the black is it really pops the colour that you put on the top surface. And um, so you can then use your power colours such as your red power colour and then some metallic gold would just look stunning. Because I've got the blue stones though, I thought I'd stick to the blue today. Uh, and stick to the blue and the silver but of course there are so many colour combinations that you guys could use and if I do the altar bottle next week I will um, do a different colour combination for you and show you a few other uh, different things. So let's take a look at some flowers. So I quite like these little flowers and they look really uh, they're just a nice simple little element and I could put one on there or I could put or I could put you know a few of them on so depending on what I want so I kind of think I quite just liked the one but if I was going to just put one then I need to resolve this edge here where I've got my mop string. So I can either hang something else off of there or I can just simply do what I'll do, get my scissors. I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that off on that end so they can stay at the level that they were. one in there so I'm just not going to come 
across the top edge because I'm going to put that flower just off to the side there with the mop strings and that's going to cover that top little join that we've got on there without being too much. So I think that'll look quite nice. Simple and then of course I could I'm actually thinking I'd quite like to take a little bit more t-shirt material, maybe a little bit of rouging, but I will finish that later. When I paint the flowers, you just have to do it gently and you have to think that if you um, paint the inside bit, it's going to stick when you paint this bit. So I generally do the back then I do the front but it's just whatever works for you and if you do find it sticks down a bit just get your kebab stick and just gently go in and separate those paper layers and then after I've done that I just get into that middle section in there but paper and Powtex is brilliant because of course the Powtex is weather resistant so it's actually going to give you longevity of your chippy shapes and it's going to make your papers hard, hardened. And uh, be gorgeous. So there we go. There we have it. A very simple little element on there. And of course it's not sitting where I placed it. Okay, and it is now. But if I wanted to, I can get in there and I can just gently um, move that to exactly where I want. Kebab sticks are really gold, so it just means that you can um, really adjust things. Oops. Bash that around a bit. A bit too much, it didn't like that. Right, so I'll let that one dry and we'll take a look at some colour now. I actually, I must confess that um, I plan to show you some terra green and then I haven't put the terra green here in front of me and I was also going to show you some of um, the beautiful dark blue power colour. Now the dark blue power colour is really gorgeous when you put it with the titanium white. It makes really, really gorgeous blues. But I'll show you the power effects because it is just right here at my fingertips. And I will show you the um, royal blue uh, power effect. So. Let's, um, hang on, I'll just get a board to work on. Should have worked on this base before and then I wouldn't have such a mess. But I thought this was <laughs> looking a bit messy too. All right. So, um, colouring. This is actually the power effects so this is the royal blue this is the turquoise and then I've used white silver so they're actually the colors that I've used on this piece so I'm going to show you how I've done that color and I'll start with some of the royal blue now the interesting thing with these power effects is that they actually look white so look at that, it looks white, but it turns out this color, which is absolutely stunning. So we'll put that there. I'm going to use a clean brush. And of course I need a bit of easy varnish as well. Give it a little bit of a shake. Uh, Robin's just asking if you could use a hot glue gun to stick the flower on. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the hot glue guns. They just come apart. You just have to do it gently with the Powtex and the Powtex is going to give you a much better 
adhesion than your hot glue is going to give you. If you've noticed over time, the hot glue just comes undone, it just pops off, it's not very nice. So it's okay to give you a little bit of an instant stick if you want to stick something like that stone on and you don't have any um, stone art. But, um, you know, make sure that you embed that stone in fabric because the the hot glue just isn't very strong. So yeah, not I'm not a great fan. <laughs> But that's just me. So if you find it easy, really it's about whatever works for you and what you find um, easy. So I'm just taking a little bit of that easy varnish and I'm picking up some of the uh, pigment and then I'm just going to brush the colour across some of those textures. Yeah, Natalie's saying she'd use stone art. Absolutely. Stone art is beautiful. Stone art's a perfect solution. That's what I've used. And yes, and also a little bit of stone art if you're going to stick on something like a flower as well can be useful too. I think that's what Natalie's saying. So you notice I'm actually brushing across the folds. So I'm not brushing with the folds. I'm actually going across. And it, this can be done by anyone. If you haven't done much painting, you can actually do this. And because you've created the texture, all you're doing is hitting the top of the texture with the, with the coloured pigment. And so anyone is actually able to do this. So you don't have to be an artist to be able to paint your pieces up nicely. You just have to take care and really look as you go about how everything is working together. A bit more of that out and we'll keep going a little bit more with that and then I'll show you the turquoise colour on top of that as well. So we're having a different Christmas this year. We're actually going to a hotel for um, Christmas dinner which will be really nice we're having it at lunchtime so we're going to one of the local hotels in Fremantle and having a family Christmas there and we're actually staying a couple of nights so Christmas Eve and Christmas night so there'll be some swimming in the pool and some spas and so I'm quite looking forward to it <laughs> it's totally different because normally we have Christmas at um, family and this year it's going to be a little bit different so that's kind of nice. Okay so you get the idea so you can see how that's just picking up all the colours. Now sorry all the textures and I'm just dry brushing across the top of those textures and then I can get another colour and I can um, add another colour on to that. Amanda's just saying, oh, that sounds blissful, no washing up. I know, right? It's going to be wonderful. We're going to have a champagne breakfast on the balcony and uh, the night before we're going to out for a meal locally as well. So it's just going to be so nice, absolutely no, no mess and no cleaning. <laughs> So what are you all doing? I heard from Natalie, so Beach Christmas. Where are you going to be this Christmas? So let's take a look at the turquoise quickly before we move on. So I just think that that um, blue colour is really nice with the blue of the stone and it just looks really, really gorgeous. <laughs> I 
I'm just trying to read the comments. That's why I suddenly went silent. Don't think my glasses are liking the distance. I've got a computer here, which is a little bit far away. I can't quite see. <laughs> okay, so I can actually take the turquoise colour on top of some of this, but let's take it into a different area. Used my hands and sprinkled. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So it is such a gorgeous colour. And of course I can layer up the colour so I can actually take some of the turquoise on top of that blue that I've already done as well. And it's just going to give me a different tone. So it's quite fun once you get good with your embellishing to actually play with layering your colour. So there you go. Um, so that's the power effects. And um, of course, we could take some lovely silver colour tricks or we could even go for a complementary colour like a bronze um, bronze colour tricks, which is actually going, the orange of the bronze is actually going to be complementary to the blue, so it's really going to pop it. So you can really play around with your colour combinations, layering and playing with colours. And it's when you pay attention to these details that you're going to get a really beautiful piece. And the more you play with your colours, the better you're going to get at embellishing and the more beautiful your pieces are going to be. So really, it's super simple to do this project. I hope you're feeling inspired and that you're excited to get out and create this weekend. Maybe make a couple of wine glasses as a beautiful, simple gift for someone this Christmas, or maybe you'll make a set for your Christmas table. Um, but how beautiful, what a lovely project. So please, in the comments, let me know if you would like the altered bottle next week um, or if you would prefer to have a chat about some Christmas gift ideas, what it is you would like to see next week because I love getting a little bit of feedback from you guys. So there we have it, beautiful, beautiful wine glasses for Christmas and... Um, you will have so much fun with this. So if you haven't already joined the Powertex Australia Creative Hub, make sure you do that because I'd love to see you post what you create this weekend because, of course, the purpose of me doing these Friday Lives for you guys is so that it inspires you to get out there and create with Powertex. So I love the Powertex. I know you're going to love it too when you get your hot little hands on it and start playing with it. There are just so many possibilities and I know many of you watching are already playing with it too and I know you guys love it as well. So join the Creative Hub, connect with us. If you're in Queensland, um, you might like to get in touch with Natalie and find out what workshops are coming up in the new year, of course, and all your trainers around Australia, you can actually organise a gift voucher from them if you need something creative for Christmas for a friend or family member who is a real creative, get in touch with your local Powtex trainer and organise a gift voucher from them um, to be able to do a workshop in the new year. So I hope you've loved that. If you need any inspiration for Christmas, you will find a special Christmas page as well on the Powtex site. And I'm sure Natalie also has some on the Bag End Studio website. And um, what else? Oh, I've just done some a lovely, a lovely new online workshop called The Lady in Rags. I know many of you have seen it. And um, for those of you who are overseas, what a perfect gift that will be for you guys um, to be able to access um, the workshop. It is, abso it is absolutely fantastic. You will love it. It's such a nice project. 
So all the all the links are in the in the description. So go and check out the links. And I hope to see you again Friday live next week, 10 a.m. Australian Western Standard Time. Have a fantastic weekend creating everyone. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. <laughs>